Hextall would like to see the Penguins get bigger and stronger and tougher and all that other stuff. One problem with that. He isn't doing anything about it. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer up Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates right where you found this. The Penguins GM at a one-on-one interview yesterday with Dave Molinari, our Hall of Fame beat writer at DK Pittsburgh Sports. And true to form, he wasn't exactly spilling his guts out with what all of his plans are and who he's talking to and everything else here. I don't take issue with that. I'm just reminding, as I've repeated many times on this show, that this isn't Jim Rutherford. Jim would tell you who he's going after, how badly he wants to get him, what it'll cost, the whole deal. Jim was the outlier here, not Hextall. What Hextall had to say on the subject specifically of getting bigger, stronger, snarlier, and all that other stuff was this, and I quote directly, it's a good question, and I don't know the answer whether it's realistic or not. I like to think it is, and we'll certainly try. We'll have to let the actions speak. Sometimes things come available, and sometimes they don't. It's hard to predict. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that, that was that. He didn't say, yeah, you know what, Eric Goodbranson's still out there. We could go get Goodbranson, and that would solve a couple of possible issues. It really would. Don't turn your nose up at this. Don't think that this is some sort of plea to go back to 1975 and have a resident enforcer either on your fourth forward line or your third defense pairing. It's not what I'm referring to here. Good Branson paired with Marcus Pedersen a couple of years ago and produced through the roof advanced analytics. The two of them communicated really, really well. There was a terrific symbiosis between them, and I'm not just referring to on the ice. I'm talking about off the ice. They were right next to each other in the locker room talking nonstop. It was funny. Whenever I'd go to chat with one or the other, the other guy would always jump in which is really rare in sports locker rooms. You'll have to take my word for that. But that's the relationship that they'd built. And it showed. And you could set up a situation here where if Goodbranson were to be paired with Pedersen, now you have Marino with Matheson. All of a sudden, your defense core... Looks like it makes some sense. It does, doesn't it? Oh, and I'm, you know, I'm not going to be one of those people who's afraid to talk about the toughness component either. Because Good Branson's got all that. There's nobody in the league that Eric Good Branson's afraid of. And that includes the resident intimidators in the Metro Division whether we're talking about the obvious guy, Tom Wilson, or we're talking about the new guy in Ryan Reeves since the Rangers went out and got their own Wilson antidote. What you want out of this hockey player is for him to be a hockey player. He's available. Good Branson's available. He's a free agent, just sitting around. I don't think he'd be all that expensive. You do have to make a move cap-wise. The Penguins have, by most reasonable calculations, less than a million dollars in cap space. You've got to move somebody out. You've got to find a way to move somebody out. But you can't use the cap as your crutch for not doing anything. You just can't. Sometimes you've got to make moves that are ugly to clear up cap space because cap space in and of itself comes with value. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins 
is brought to you by the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they're committed to providing food for all of our neighbors in need across western Pennsylvania. And they, in turn, need your help. Visit pittsburghfoodbank.org to find out how $1 from you is all it takes to produce five full meals. pittsburghfoodbank.org I don't doubt the veracity of what Hextall and Brian Burke have been saying about the roster since, what, since the day they were hired? Both of them, independently and together, have looked at this group and said, man, they got to get bigger. And then when they say these things, Hextall goes out and gets Danton Heinen. Not to keep picking on Danton Heinen, but this is the signing that just makes absolutely no sense. I'll, I'll eat my words when Danton Heinen rings up 15, 20 goals, whatever it is. I'm never shy about admitting when I've been wrong about somebody or something. But I, I that doesn't add up. This is a roster going into this coming camp that's going to have seven, possibly eight, or nine candidates for fourth line forward. This is the last thing that was needed. Sure, he was cheap, $1.1 million, whatever, but that's $1.1 million of cap space that you could have put toward an actual need, an actual player who would have made sense within your existing roster. He was a value signing. That was Hextall's terminology, a value signing. Well, great. I mean, if if I'm walking through, I don't know, Walmart, and I see a, a hibachi that's at half price, I still am not going to buy it because where I live doesn't allow for a hibachi to be used on my balcony. You know, value signing doesn't mean a thing doesn't mean a thing. I'm not ready to pound a fist on the table over Good Branson specifically, but he checks off a lot of the boxes, you know? Maybe his price is too high. He's, he's made some decent money in the NHL because he's a pretty good hockey player. Why not? Why not? Work something out. Move some parts around. Don't let the cap be what holds you down. When we come back, just one question. Welcome back. It's time for Just One Question. That's brought to you always on this program by Fubo TV. The monthly cost of cable is over 200 bucks. Fubo TV is 65 bucks a month to watch all the same channels, including AT&T Sportsnet Pittsburgh. And right now, Fubo TV is offering our listeners of this show a seven-day free trial and 15% off your first month by going to FuboTV.com slash DK. See, it's just for us. FuboTV.com slash DK to get 15% off your first month. Our question comes from Mr. Eric, who asks, Do the Penguins know how much time Evgeny Malkin's going to miss? The answer to that question is no. However, they do have some idea, clearly, Referencing the same one-on-one interview that Ron Hextall did with Dave Molinari, our beat writer at DK Pittsburgh Sports, Hextall said that the team plans to have something of a firmer update around the start of training camp later this month. And when I say firmer, I'm comparing that to the only real outlook we've been given to date, which is that he's going to miss training camp. 
that in and of itself doesn't really say a heck of a lot. One of the possibilities that was brought up with Hextall in this interview was that Malkin could miss time and start out the season on long-term injured reserve, LTIR, which would give the Penguins some much-needed relief on the cap front. If that were to happen, he'd have to miss at least 10 games in 24 days. And to that, Hextall acknowledged that it's, quote, certainly something that we've talked about, end quote. That doesn't sound as if they've gotten some super surprising, upbeat news on the Geno front. It sounds like things are going pretty much the way they'd anticipated. And further, by the time training camp is here and Malkin is in the fold and he can be examined by the team's doctors and have other tests done, then they'll have a much, much clearer idea than they do right now when he's actually not even around. So that's about as clear as that's going to get. You're going to have to enter this camp, as the Penguins have recognized, including in public, with Jeff Carter as your number two center, and you're going to have to adjust everything else accordingly. If Malkin does miss a sizable portion of the coming season, the one and only plus to that is that they do get the cap relief. Well, I guess the other plus would be that you know he doesn't have to go through 82 games before getting to the playoffs. I guess that's the other one. And the fact that his knee would be healthy, which it obviously wasn't, through the last regular season and into those playoffs. That's the best we can do, Mr. Eric. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We'll do this again Monday. Thank you.